Hello everyone. Sometimes it takes a little while for me to think of the topics that I use in these videos, and other times the subject falls right into my lap. And that is what has happened today. We're talking about Alfa Romeo. Now Alfa are a curious company that I have very much a love-hate relationship with. An awful lot of their products I feel are real near misses, cars that I look at and go, oh, if only that were rear wheel driver to be perfect. And yet, somehow, I still love so many of them. They are flawed, but brilliant. And as I get a little bit older, I stop caring about cars which are all round brilliant anymore. And I start focusing on those which have just a real character, a real charm. And I feel like many Alfa Romeos fit into that category. However, when they released the Julia a few years ago, suddenly we stopped needing to make that many excuses for them. This was a car which could really compete on the international stage, and it was no longer a car you had to say, well, that's quite good for an Alpha. It was simply a good car. I've driven the Julia in a few different variants. On the channel, I've reviewed the Quadrifoglio, and off camera, I've driven a couple of others too, and a couple of Stelvios. They're all fantastic. Sure, there's a couple of areas where they're a little bit behind the competition, but they're also way ahead in others. The way they steer, the way they feel, just the sort of general atmosphere you get, that, that lovely badge, you do really feel like you're in a special car, and that's something that is becoming increasingly rare. Unfortunately, Alfa Romeo have gone through some tough times. Things look to be going really, really well for them, and then their CEO, Sergio Marchionne, passed away. And when that happened, everybody knew that Alfa Romeo were going to be in for a rough time because he was the guy that was spearheading their renaissance. Now, fast forward a little bit of political shifting, a merger, and, and a whole heap of other things. And a lot of plans that Alfa Romeo said they had are now firmly in the dustbin. A rumoured sort of two-seater sports car, the 6C, something along those lines, maybe a return to the 8C type thing. And indeed, the GTV, which was a rumoured coupe version of the Julia, all gone thrown away in the bin. The one car that survived the cull was going to be what people thought was going to be called the GTA. And that car indeed was announced not too long ago. It was a hotted up version of the Julia Quadrifoglio, a bit more power, a bit less weight, some tarty and slightly dodgy looking wheel extensions and a, a sprinkling of nice bits here and there. And Seems like the sort of thing that you would do with a car that's now a few years old to try and entice some new buyers into the brand. Now, obviously this wasn't going to be as cheap as a regular Julia, but it was a, a more, you know, hardcore stripped out version. It didn't seem to be anywhere near as extreme as, say, the BMW M4 GTS or anything like that. And so the one thing they didn't tell people to begin with was the price. And that is the story that fell into my lap because that has now been announced. The regular Julia Quadrifoglia, if you tick absolutely every single option you possibly can, will come in at just under £80,000 or, or, or thereabouts. They start at about 65. I suspect most specs would be about 70, 75 RRP, with cars being sold at a possible discount. I don't really know. I don't know anyone that's bought a new Julia for a little while. In the classifieds, you can pick up very nice examples of earlier cars for just over 35 grand. So there's a lot out there now at a really affordable price, and they are an absolute bargain. Probably my sort of hot saloon pick of the day. Not anywhere near as rounded as the other German rivals, but just, just lovable, just thoroughly and totally lovable. So I suspected with that in mind, base price 75 grand, I thought, you know what, the GTA. It's probably going to be about 100. I know everyone would love them to say, yeah, it's the base car plus about 10 grand. But when you look into what's in there, you know, the you've got a um, titanium exhaust. You know, you've got the body extensions, which does mean a little bit of rehomologation type stuff here and there. You know, you've got some extra bits of carbon and things like that. And, and this stuff does add up. Alfa aren't going to be making very many of them. We're making 500. So, you know, you know, I, these things always cost a lot more than people think. So I thought, yeah, 20 to 25 grand over the base price. That's about where the car's going to be. <laughs> oh no, oh no, no, um, it's 150 grand, at least that's the news article that published today, it's 170 something thousand euros, 153 grand for the base car, and then naturally the one with less stuff in it is a little bit more, just shy of 160 grand. Alfa Romeo, are you high? 
no one's going to buy that. All right, okay, maybe not no one. I'm sure, sure there are a few dedicated Alfisti out there that if you'd said it was going to be a quarter of a million quid, they still would have bought it. You know, Nissan managed to sell three of the Duke GTRs at half a million pounds just because there were three crazy people out there that'll pay that amount of money for a Duke. I just, I mean, look, let's ignore, let, let's ignore the fact that a McLaren 720S just sold for 125 grand. Let's just ignore that for a minute, okay? Let's just look at a basic level as to what your GTA actually is. So a remap, it's an exhaust, it's a couple of bits, slightly tacky rear arch extension, a little bit on the front, that's basically it. You haven't gone to anywhere near the engineering level of even sort of the M4 GTS, which had other trick stuff like fancy rear OLED lights, water injection, all this kind of jazz. And it's definitely, definitely nowhere near the level of the Jaguar Project 8, which I know a lot of people would cite as going, well, Jaguar thought they could sell a, a saloon car with a similar amount of power for this amount of money. Well, actually, the Project 8, this is a heavier car, it's a heavier car, I'll accept that, um, is more powerful, with 600 horsepower, I think, um, and that is a serious piece of engineering. I mean, I think only one body panel on that was changed. They shoved an engine into that car that it was never, ever supposed to have as a truly bespoke piece of kit. It's incredible. It's, it's a total, total transformation. The GTA looks like something that sort of anyone could have done. And like I say, at the 100, maybe a little bit more, you know, thousand pound price bracket, I could have accepted it and gone, yeah, uh, it's expensive, but it's hardcore special, you know, I, I guess you could easily say that £100,000 these days gets you a very humdrum 911 C2S or C4S, maybe more applicable. And so you go, yeah, okay, um, you know, if you look at it that way, then the Alpha is actually pretty decent value for 530 horsepower, but I, d I just don't, I think a lot of people were disappointed at the power figure, because a lot of people were rumouring it's going to be about 600 horsepower, and as far as I'm aware, the engine is good for 600 horsepower. So I just don't know why Alpha chose to price it like that. That seems quite unnecessary and I'm just a little bit confused about the whole thing. Don't know what they were thinking. I think they'd have really, really struggled anyway. Like I say, the Project 8, amazing piece of engineering, that was limited to about 300 examples they didn't find homes for all of those. Don't know exactly how many they did sell, but I'm pretty confident they didn't sell out because even after, long after they'd announced the car, they then decided to do the, the Project 8 touring to try and entice some more buyers in because they just hadn't sold. And that's a shame because that was a really cool, awesome skunkworks type car. The GTA, by comparison, is a relatively lazy piece of engineering. And the biggest problem, really, is going to be the fact that um, the regular Giulio Quadrifoglio is fantastic. Brilliant, wonderful, it's going to sound pretty similar. And, and that's the other thing, I'm, I mean, I don't know, I haven't seen announced, but it's got this fancy titanium exhaust on it. However, most new cars coming out now are a lot quieter than they used to be. So even with that on it, I suspect it's still going to be quieter than an earlier uh, Quadrifoglio. And the Quadrifoglio didn't make the nicest noise ever anyway. I know a lot of people disagree with me. A lot of people think it makes a really, really nice sound, but I, I just... I just don't, it's just a bit nasty, so that doesn't really bother me. And yeah, when you can pick up one of those for 35, 40 grand for a nice one, that's what I'd do. And I'm sure you could take it to Alphaworks or any number of different places, give them 10, 15 grand, and you'd have something that probably performs equally as well as the GTA, and you could, I suppose, make it even more special. The other thing as well that bugs me is the fact that Alfa Romeo have cited that with the GTA they've lost 100 kilos in the car somehow. They said it's got a carbon fibre drive shaft, is, is one of the news articles uh, that I saw cited, which I was pretty sure that the thing had anyway. The other problem is that I really, 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 really don't believe Alfa Romeo because they don't know how to use a set of scales anyway. Um, I mean, I stood on Alfa Romeo scales once and it said that I was 10 stone. The uh, Giulio Quadrifoglio, according to them, is 1,525 kilos, which would make it far lighter than a BMW M4. It's it's not. It's not. There's a, an independent website, Wade One, and it came in at 1,700. Nearly 200 kilos over what they claim. So when they then go and claim a 100 kilo weight loss, it's sort of like, well, even if you've actually genuinely achieved that, it's not actually that impressive because that then only brings the weight of your super special edition ultra lightweight car down to the weight of a normal BMW M4. 
So yeah, that Alfa Romeo Giulia GTA. I'm sure it's a fantastic and brilliant car, but I'm not sure anyone's going to buy one. I did some maths earlier as well, and I looked just out of interest how much it was, how much it cost compared with an Alfa 8C when that came out. Now they were 112,000 pounds in 2010, and the inflation calculator tells me that that works out to just over 140,000 pounds now. So it's actually even more expensive, inflation adjusted, than an 8C. And I don't think anyone's going to try and argue the fact that the 8C, yes, I know it's a Maserati in a dress, but the 8C is certainly, I think, far more of an interesting project, far more of a special thing than the GTA. Anyway, that's my rant. It's, it's a real shame. Personally, personally, I, I'm heartbroken for the fact that Alpha weren't able to make these other cars because I really, really would love to have seen the 6C, the GTV, all this other stuff, and I'm just not sure pricing the GTA like they have um, and, and releasing it at a time that they are, which is not their fault. Nobody could have predicted this. Um, I just, yeah. I, I can smell bargains. I can smell big discounts. If they're actually going to build them and hope they find homes, yeah. Ask for a discount. Don't be a list. Thanks for watching. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Bye-bye.